Here we have a reaction, a delta H standard, a delta S standard, and down here we're given a delta G standard. The quantity of heat really released when you use this many grams is the standard value adjusted for how many moles of reaction you run. So if you have two moles of this, you get to run the reaction one mole of times. If you have four moles of chemical, you only get to run the reaction two moles of times. So what we're gonna do is convert to moles and say you get the reaction one half as many times as this number of moles and multiplied by the delta H standard. And that will be the kilojoules per mole of chemical. Notice that it's per mole of chemical on the bottom there that you will get. Remember we have delta G standard and we're just gonna put it in here. We know the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Remember to make this joules by multiplying by a thousand. Don't forget both negative signs. It's very easy to end up with one through carelessness, uh, but we've all done it. And multiply and take inverse natural log. This has a justification using Gibbs free energy equation. I have another way. If delta H standard is a negative number, then the heat is coming out and it lives over here. If we increase the temperature, that's providing heat to the reaction. That will force it back left. Left is a less negative delta G standard number, less negative. If the reaction is being forced backward in the current conditions compared to the previous conditions, then delta G standard has got to become more positive. Or we could say if this is going up, then because this is a negative, a negative, right? This becomes more positive. And so this answer is becoming more positive as the this we know is positive. It's going greater, greater, greater. On C, we're asked for the standard molar entropy for O2. And that might seem like that's maybe even impossible. But the standard delta S will be the standard entropy of the products minus the reactants, remembering that this is rated per mole of reactions run. When we run the reaction one mole of times, you need two of these and one of those and two of those. So what we'll get is the entropy times two minus this entropy times two minus this entropy times one, and that's what we're solving for. So here's the product value times two minus one of the reactants value times two, minus, this distributes in, the O2 value times one, and we'll solve for the S standard O2 as X. The somewhat difficult thing to remember maybe about the bond energy calculations is that it's reactants minus products. We've said it so many times the other way around that I start to forget. The thing that gets me back on track is remembering that if you break a bond, you put energy in. If you form a bond, you get energy out. When we run this one mole of times, we're going to break two of these and one of those and form two of those, but we have to drill down a little farther. We're going to break two of these bonds, that's energy in, that's a positive value. One of these, that's energy in, that's a positive value. And the other trick to this that is very easy to forget is that the N is in the middle of two O's. So it's bonded once, twice, and then we have two of that molecule. So we're going to form four of those bonds and release that much energy, that value down below four times as we create two molecules of this. So we'll take the delta H standard value from the very top, put it in here, take double this, put it here, one times this, put it there, we're solving for this, so it's four of those. Remember that that's a negative because they're being formed and energy is coming out. Then we can subtract over, subtract over, divide by negative four, and we get our final value, and that is for NO2.